You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, hosted by Joey and Holly Baird. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is on the air, and it's heard on WNLV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. WAAM 1600 AM and 92.7 FM, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And KMET 1490 AM, Banning, California. Coming up on the program today, it's about plants that you can grow in partial shade. There's a number of vegetables, fruits, and herbs that you can be have very productive garden with in just partial shade. As well as we'll go over some of the most popular and crazy social media garden tips that simply are not true. Our guest, she is an author of Backyard Foraging. Ellen Zokas will be with us to talk about things that you can harvest that you deem and plant that you may not even know is in your backyard. The hour's jam-packed, plus your garden questions, and that all starts right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time out of your day to join us on the program, whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, or anywhere in between via the simple on those radio stations, the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, or through podcast replay, uh, in-studio video replay, or listening to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. We are from the east to west coast. Holly Baird. Yes. You can find all of our content at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com uh, for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and about 1,400 garden videos now, short and long format, of in-studio video and in-garden uh videos as well as podcasts of every show that we've done uh, on the program here. There's a number of ways in which you can contact us and they all revolve around the IV Organics or the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the power planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand welded, made in the USA, and they offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. You can contact us uh, through a variety of different means, and they all revolve around the IV Organics 3 in 1 Plant Guard hotline. Ivy Organic 301 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 301 Plant Guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com, or you can text us on the instant app access ivyorganics.com text line and that's 414-368-9311 you can tweet us using hashtag twvg or twitter handle is at twvg show don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311 and we want to take a moment and thank you for downloading the program if you're on a podcast replay of it we uh, so appreciate people from all over from uh, San Jose to uh, New York to Tampa, Florida picking us up and taking us along taking time out of your day to download our program uh, and to uh, learn from us or be entertained by us we appreciate that very much another thing you can appreciate is plants that you can grow in partial shade in your backyard Uh, there's a number of plants in which we can grow vegetables herbs uh, and fruits so we're going to go over some of the most popular ones and maybe some unfamiliar ones that you are not aware of that you can grow in so we're going to start with mint well first what is partial shade So, okay partial shade is uh what like six four to six hours or so of sunlight a day. So this might be something by some trees, under trees, by like a shed, something like that where you have limited sun. Now all of these plants are partial shade tolerant plants. They're not partial shade loving plants. Plants would prefer to be grown in full sun all day if given the opportunity. These are plants that will tolerate a certain duration of indirect sunlight. So let's, I want to clear that up. These are not, oh, we love to be planted in partial shade. We'll tolerate it, we'll grow, and that's about it. 
right. will produce. So it's that that's the clarity there. So first we'll start with mint, as you spoke about, uh, as an herb here. Yeah, mint is a nice herb to grow. It can be a little invasive. So oh, it is very invasive. You, I guess it is very invasive. So you want to grow it in a shaded, um, in a, a container. You can bury the container in the ground. Mm-hmm. And, and because it will spread, it's got runners. It will overtake your area very, very quickly. Uh, and there's several different types of mint in which you can grow, but you want to do it in a container or a designated, basically raised bed with a liner on the bottom to prevent it from overtaking your area. It's like right. creeping Charlie, essentially. Yeah, it's uh, actually it will in the same family. O- overrun everything. It's in the same family as creeping Charlie. Yeah. So I want to talk about Malabar spinach, and this is becoming more popular, I would say, and it's uh, it is a part of the spinach family, but this is actually a vining crop. And you can trellis. You can trellis it. Okay. And it's I I think the leaves are a little bit thicker than spinach. And isn't it kind of a reddish color? Too? It has a reddish, reddish tint to it, yes. Yeah, so that you can definitely grow and shade year-round. Now, if your climate is frost-free, so if you are in an area that doesn't get frost, it will grow year-round. But if it's something where you grow it outside, then you would ha- then it would die because of frost. Uh, let's go with tomatoes. Tomatoes, uh, not all tomatoes can grow in partial shade. We find that cherry tomatoes can tolerate that partial shade more than the big fruiting tomatoes. Big fruiting tomatoes, forget it. We're not even going to try that. The small cherry tomatoes, the grape tomatoes, can do somewhat decent in a partial shade area. They do prefer full sun, but if that is limited to you, go and you want to grow uh, tomatoes grow with the cherry or the grape variety. Uh, those are going to produce better for you in a low light condition such as partial shade. Let's look at uh, a perennial, or uh, a, which would be asparagus. Yeah, asparagus, asparagus can grow in partial shade. That's not a problem. Uh, <clears throat> now would be the time in the upper Midwest here that we want wanted. To now, a perennial is basically it's going to come back year after year, so you need to plant it in a space that's going to permanent be permanent. Um, uh, especially asparagus, I think it grows like what thirty years, thirty fifty years. Yeah, so uh, it quite minimal amount of work, and you want to get if you, you can start it from seed, yes, but it would be recommended if you buy crowns of a one or two year variety and plant it that way. Now is the time to do it up here in the upper Midwest. And uh, the most common one I think was it Martha Washington. Martha Washington. There's Mary, a, Washington. Uh, there's Mary Wash. There's green varieties and there's white varieties. Two. Okay, so then your greens, so like arugula, uh, Chinese Asian greens, like pak choy, bok choy, those are good. Um, These are cool, cooler weather crops mm-hmm. early in the season, late in the fall. But if we grow it in partial shade, we can kind of trick the plant to thinking that it's not as warm or the days are not as long, and you can get a little more life out of them. They're Mizuna. 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 Lettuce, all sorts of lettuce. Beets. Uh, mustard greens. Let's go with beets. Beets are yeah, a favorite beets. in our house. Some people... Do not like pickled beets or beets in general, but they're really easy to grow. Partial shade, we're going to plant some today. Uh, you do have to thin them out because they come in clusters of seeds, or the, the seed is a cluster of a mul- uh, five to six smaller seeds, and that's just the way the plant develops the offspring of the, the seeds for the next year, and you have to thin them out uh, in order to get a harvest. And then you can grow things like cabbage, Brussels sprouts, uh, cauliflower, broccoli, things of the brassica family or the cruciferous family, kohlrabi, kale, I think I covered all of them, yes. um, rutabaga, turnips, those, those family, that family of plants, vegetables, can grow in the partial shade. It may not get as big as if you had more of like a, a, a partial sun, which is more like more sun than shade. Eight, yeah. eight hours yeah, a day. Eight hours sun. full sun. Full sun. Well, full sun can be anywhere from like six to twelve. But yeah, so if you had more sun, they would get bigger. Swiss chard. Swiss chard is really fun to grow. It's good to eat. Now, and um, now, what is your saying about if you grow it for the what, what is okay, it? Okay, so if you grow it for the fruits or the root. You, it prefers full sun, but if you grow it for the greens, it can handle partial Greens shade. or the leaves. Yeah, greens or leaves. So that kind of holds true, but some of these will grow, like we talked about, partial shade. They will produce, but not to the magnitude that they would if they were given the opportunity to have full sun. The beets, uh, the Brussels sprouts, uh, green beans is another one. Uh, bush beans will grow in partial shade. But again, not production as heavy as um, they would. Uh, rhubarb is a partial shade. We grow it in a container in, uh, in a partial shade area. does very, very you, well. You grow it in a container. You grow okay. I'm not involved with that mess. Yeah, I know. No, no. Yeah. Not at all. Um, <clears throat> did we talk about leeks. scallions? Scallions and, and leeks. Leeks, yeah. So those are kind of in the, the same family. 
Uh, those are good to to grow, definitely. And then uh, carrots. Yes, carrots. Along with parsnips. Mm Mm-hmm. And then oh, we talked about beets. Both both of those carrots and parsnips do need deep penetrating. uh, They do have deep penetrating deep penetrating roots, and it would be best to grow them. At least we have found in a large container with a large amount of soil. If you have very loose native soil, they do well there too, but uh, you're going to have some growth, uh, some root uh, deficiency or, or deformities if you try to grow it in uh, normal soil in your garden if you do not have a good soil. So there's a few things to note about growing in partial shade. One is that you're, you're keeping it watered, you are probably going to have to water it less because it's not in the full sun. The soil is not going to dry out as fast. We encourage you in, uh, to use mulch as well when planting these crops. Uh, the root crops, you have to wait till they emerge, but use a mulch. That also retains moisture in the soil and reduces weeds that we have to remove. And then the time to maturity could take slower or could take longer, would be slower. So that's another thing. Um, you can start some seedlings indoors, and then you can direct sow some. So that's not really different than if you're growing in full sun. Radish, still- radishes. Uh, let's, let's go back one. Radishes are a quick-growing, partial shade, tolerable plant. Take about 18 to 32 days to uh, reach a maturity. You can grow them in partial shade. Now, we all experiment with things in the garden. Because we tell you something, or the University of wherever tells you something, that doesn't mean you can't go and explore of, let's see if that really is true. When we heard that if you don't cage your tomatoes, you lose 50% of the harvest. So we experimented with it. That did turn out to be true, that we lost 50% of the uh, the fruit because the vines laid on the ground. By the time they matured, they rotted, slugs got a hold of them, etc. So we, the partial shade radishes, I understood that radishes... Uh, this was several years ago, that they didn't, they don't grow good in the summer. They can't tolerate the heat or the day length. So I thought, okay, we've got tomatoes growing. Let's plant them directly underneath the tomato plant. That prevented all sunlight, and they did not do much except for get two or three inches tall, and then they fell over because they didn't have the adequate sunlight. So we experimented with that. didn't work. So just because it says don't do it doesn't mean you can't do it. Sometimes it does become successful for you, even though everybody and everything says no. Right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely something to keep in mind. And, and to follow up on that, uh, garlic is a partial shade tolerable plant. You typically plant that in the fall. You let it establish root system. It goes into dormancy over the winter, and you harvest it late June, early July here on the upper Midwest. Uh, you can plant it in the spring, but you have to get it in the ground very, very early, as soon as you can essentially chisel it in the ground, because they need a certain amount of cold hours in order for the bulb to develop correctly. So we've taken that into consideration. We tried it last year. We did get some bulb development. So... We're past all the real cold times here in the upper Midwest, uh, in our well, in, 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 in the Milwaukee, in Milwaukee area. area. So There's portions of upper Midwest right. going to be a while. Uh, for us, we're going to take and take uh, about six or seven cloves and put them in the ground right now and just see what happens to see if the bulb develops correctly over the summer months or we get absolutely nothing. We want to see what how how realistic that um, information is. Definitely. Um, so another thing to keep in mind is you can, if the, a lot of times when plants are growing in partial shade, the leaves will become darker and bigger of that plant. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just kind of what happens with growing in partial shade. And then um, you can use reflective mulching. What, so what is, is a reflective mulch? Probably? So I looked this up and it's things like there's like um, silver, silvery mulch, like a mirror okay. type mulch. It's more like a plastic that you roll out, and same thing like, with like red. a plastic, but with a aluminum reflection capability. Right, but it's not aluminum foil. No, okay. Maybe you could use aluminum foil. I, I'm not sure, but this would be more for to help encourage more sunlight. Okay, so you can use reflective. Just stro- now, if you throw have, the light into the yeah. plant. Okay, if you have a shed or something that you're planting near, or a building, if it's white, that's going to help. Uh, bounce. Reflect, b- bounce the light onto those plants. So that's a couple things to think about. If you do use reflective mulch, whether it's red or, or other mulch, you want to be aware that these plants still need water. So if you're going to go to that uh, level of 
Like and, laying it next to it or planting in between. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, put it, put a, a drip irrigation system under the plastic or under that reflective mulch so the water can still get to the root system. So there is some uh, different alternatives in which you can uh, research there. And you can definitely experiment. You, you know, we gave you a pretty comprehensive list, but maybe you want to try something else and see what the result is and uh, take a stab at it. That's right. Uh, so it's a number of different things in which we can grow in partial shade that maybe you did not know was capable of doing such. Well, when we come back, we've all been on social media. We've all seen these cute pictures or these descriptions of, you can do this with this, but a lot of them are just a clickbait application. And we're going to go over some of the more popular ones of bad social media garden kept posts. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Don't go anywhere. For more gardening information, visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. But wait, wait, wait. Until after the show, we still have more garden information to talk about. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants, to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Dermaceuticals essential oils are high-grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit Dermaceuticals.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy, homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Old container soil. Reuse it. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. For containers that are 10 gallons or larger to refresh the soil, remove a quarter to half of the soil on top. Use that for your raised beds, and then replenish with fresh soil in the grow bag. You can also fertilize at this time. Just follow the directions. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash Patients. New New Natural Healing Ointment, USDA Certified Organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel-filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use for indoor and outdoor use. Saves time and money. Lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it, tomatosnaps.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. 
Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, organic, friendly products. Based on research and innovation, after 28 years, they're the leader in, leader in organic lawn and gardening industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizer, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizer. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family that is following principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. You can believe what Dr. Earth has for you for your garden. What you can't believe is some of the social media posts or uh, advice uh, popular posts that you will see on your Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest and alike of bad gardening social media uh, advice or tips. Uh, let's let's talk about a couple of these, so you don't do them. So I think this one makes you crazy, um, like little planters, vertical strawberries, rain gutters. Not necessarily the rain gutter grow system that's different. This is the this gr- is rain, the gutters or, in rain gutters or small containers mounted to the side of a fence or a garden shed. It, it looks pretty, but here's the thing, especially with strawberries. You've got a minimal amount of soil in the rain gutter or container that you've got mounted to the side of the fence or the, the barn or the shed. Your, your strawberries are only going to produce if you've got June bearing for about three, two to three weeks a year. If you have ever bearing, you're going to get maybe five to six weeks a year. You've got to maintain that grow system, watering those plants, pretty much two to three times a day in the hottest portion of the year because the evaporation is so intense that the plants don't have enough soil to retain the moisture in order for them to need. It's a beautiful picture, but a complete waste of time. If you're going to grow strawberries, and this is something that I have encouraged people uh, for many years, if you're going to, if, want, if you want a strawberry patch, establish one in the actual ground. You have minimal amount to almost no maintenance required. If you do it in a container, a grow tower, a rain gutter, whatever system, you're going to have to consistently water and maintain these plants just for a little harvest a few weeks a year. Right. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Um, so let's c- talk real quick about planting in eggshells. Egg cartons, this looks really cute on P- Pinterest. You plant your whatever seeds in an eggshell, egg carton. and Even and, a, even like the hollowed out lemon skin or, or orange Oh, yeah, peel. those too. So what happens is that that's ideal, but then once that seedling starts to sprout, in probably like, I don't know, three weeks, it's going to need some more room for roots. It's going to dry out just like that. If other, you forget to water, it's going to dry out in about 12 minutes. So you're going to transfer it, so you're using all that time to to grow. If you something. just use a root maker a starting tray, a party cup, they have a lot of soil in each one of the, those in a cell or in the cup where you can let that plant establish for many, many weeks uh, that you do not have to deal with it because the more we fuss with the plants and transplant them, the more shock they can go into. We want to basically plant once, go into the um, plant once, and then plant it in the garden and be done. That's the, the, the minimum or direct sow. That's really the minimal amount of fussing we can do with these plants, the better off we are. Right. So this is, I think, your favorite is the potato box. Now, please note, you can grow potatoes in a box or a container, but you're not going to get 100 pounds of potatoes from that box or container. The, the, the premise is you take a four foot by four foot square area. You have four posts and you put boards around 
the four posts, and you create uh, a vertical growing box. You plant one row or one layer of potatoes at the bottom, and then as the potatoes germinate and sprout, you fill soil in on top of the leaves, like you would heal potatoes up in a garden if you're doing the traditional trench method. Then you add another board, and you put more soil in as they grow. And then once they get four feet tall, the the box is filled, they will cascade over the top. And the the theory is everywhere that stem touches soil, more roots will develop and more tubers will uh, grow. True enough, potatoes are part of the nightshade family. The down the, the incorrect information is just because they're part of the nightshade family, like a tomato, doesn't mean everywhere the stem touches soil roots emerge that does that's not true they will produce potatoes in about a four to six foot a four to six inches under the soil there's a little pocket of of root development and that's it so you can go online go to youtube and search potato tower box or potato box and you can see 60 80 100 videos of people creating a potato tower expecting to get 6 80 to 100 pounds of potatoes out of it but when you search for successful potato tower harvest you get zero you get a lot of videos about how they were disappointed and how they ended up with fewer potatoes than what they in, they started with but it the, what does work is if you do a layer Put the soil on top of, do another layer, put the soil on top of, do another. You'll get more potatoes than just one layer at the bottom. So do it in the ground. Uh, we're going to do a no-dig potato method as well um, uh, in our videos. Uh, works very well. Potato tower, forget it. Doesn't work. Okay, so seeds that seem too good to be true. So rainbow strawberries, um, rainbow strawberries. The magical seeds. Magical seeds, uh, rainbow rose, all sorts of stuff like that. If it says magical, number one, you know it's a gimmick. Uh, if you go to MI Gardener and you search blue watermelon, if you go to a big seed company and search blue this or whatever, you, if they don't have it, it doesn't exist because these reputable uh, companies would have the seeds if they were available to be purchased. If there was all of these things, they would have them uh, for sale. Now, there really is like this blue banana. And yes. That's a real thing. That's something you can grow. You can't, you can't grow it in... Like our zone five, I think it was like eight to ten or something that can grow at eight to eleven. So you definitely need to to pay attention to that. But that is a thing, the blue banana. Uh, and finally, here let's talk about companion planting. You can go online, search companion planting charts, and see what is good to plant next to a tomato. You can look at seven different charts and get five different recommendations of what's good and what's not, and they all interming and there's no hard set. This is what needs to be planted because there's no proof that if we plant this next to that, it will benefit the plants. There are some people who swear by if we plant this next to that, it does work. Now, there is polyculture Mm -hmm. where you plant, for example, a zucchini plant, and then you plant basil around that zucchini plant to mask the smell of the zucchini plant. So the squash bug doesn't find it because the smell of the basil emits and confuses the bugs from attacking your that's, plant. That's, that's, that's polyculture. That's polyculture. Now, companion planting would be like you grow your basil next to your tomatoes because supposedly they help, they help each other. It makes the tomatoes sweeter the tomatoes or something sweeter of or something like craziness that. like that. Or like, it's not really companion planting, but planting marigolds to keep the rabbits out of your garden. When you watch the rabbits eat the marigolds after you've planted them. Yeah. So that's something. Um, vol- volcano mulching uh, or volcano, I think that's what it's volcanic called. Mulching. Volcanic mulching. It's when you pile the mulch next to a tree three, so, two or so three feet above the above, actual crown of the tree and then like up to it so yeah. like it's flush with the tree just level level is all you well, need. level and you're supposed to kind of make like a little divot a well a well a yeah. well around it well one thing that you can find on social media that's not a hoax or a joke is phylum bioproducts and they have products that will help control and eliminate the japanese beetles which we're getting inundated with each year more and more here in the upper midwest and across the country soon it will be warm enough and you want to make sure you're enjoying your garden without beetles and grubs the spring just around the corner it's time to start thinking about controlling 
those pests. Phylum Bioproducts does just that with potent, environmentally safe biological pet contr- pest control products. It is the first BT insecticide with power enough, powerful enough control both adult and larvae stages of susceptible pets. Pests. Excuse me. And unlike the chemical products, Phylum's line of products do not pose risk to beneficial insects such as bees, butterflies, and other pollinators that exist with chemical products. Therefore, you can now achieve control rates like you expect from the chemical insecticides without doing the harm to the rest of the environment, fi- visit phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M, bioproducts.com. Well, the product works if you want something that does get rid of the uh, Japanese beetles. That is the product for you. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk with a lady that is has a multi-books to her name as well as she is going to talk to us about foraging in our backyard and in our neighborhood about items which we didn't know existed that uh, can help us save money but eat healthier. Ellen Zokas will be with us. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Got a question? Email the show at twvgshow at gmail.com. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter Earth Auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root to soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthier, more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. World CoolestRainGauge.com. Need I say more? Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5 in 1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Dig perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Help for, for weeding. ProPlugger.com. Soil Diva is the best kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all natural liquid biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at Soil Diva. Net. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available at mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants, will not wash off, and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit bobex.com. B-O-B-B-E-X dot C-O-M. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh foods, carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff catering available open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Carrots can be a troubling crop to grow, but with a few tips, you can have success. It's time for this week's Michigan Garden Moment. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Carrots are very tiny seeds and require a small amount of soil to be placed on top of them. In return, that soil dries out very quickly and takes moisture away from the seed, which is needed to germinate, and your germination rate is very low. To increase the germination rate by 80%, do the following. Plant your seeds in good, loose, loomy soil, whether that is in a traditional ground, in a raised bed, in a container, in a grow bag. Then once your soil is hydrated, plant your seeds, cover the seeds up with a dusting of soil, then cover the seeds with some type of barrier, whether that be a car- 
piece of cardboard, a 2x4, 2x8, something to cover the soil where the seeds are at. This will prevent moisture from evaporating away from the soil. This will in turn hydrate the seeds and allow them to germinate more and quicker. Seeds take about 14 to 21 days for the carrots to germinate. At that point, you want to remove the covering. See if you can see the small germination seeds. If you can, remove the cardboard or board and allow the sun and nature to take its course. The seeds are not going to be damaged if you accidentally leave them under the covering an extra week or two. The seeds still believe they're under soil trying to pierce through, so it's not going to hurt the seeds at all. Remove the cardboard or the board and let nature take its course. You will be amazed of how many more carrots you will get by planting them in this way. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at ShieldAndSeal.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at FlameEngineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center has 40 varieties of bulk material. You continue to hear us say that because that's the only place in the area that has that many different items, from compost to sand to gravel to mulch and everything in between. They even have a lot of great gardening knowledge and landscaping knowledge. They also are going to soon, and spring is just right around the corner, or real spring, I guess, they're going to have all those experts and plants and seeds and all that good stuff. Fertilizer and everything that you need to get your garden up and going and be successful. Where can we find Blue Mills? 4930 West Limits Road in Greenfield, just south of Layton. You can call 414-282-4220 or go to bluemills.com. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Helen Zakos is a is passionate about foraging, plant, and food. She wants to share that passion with you. Are you curious about foraging? Are you passionate about food? Are you nervous about getting started? Helen is willing to show you and teach you how to do the right, how to do it right here in, in her new book. She wrote a number of great books, including Backyard Foraging, The Wild Crafter co- Cocktail, Growing Healthy House Plants, and a few also she has online courses and videos and podcasts to learn from. Um, welcome to the program, Ellen. Thank you very much for having me. Well, we're so glad you're taking time out of your day to join us, not only enlighten Holly and myself, but all of our listeners with a lot of information that uh, we're not uh, as educated on as maybe we should. <laughs> now, it's well, there's a lot of people in Wisconsin who are excellent foragers, so you're in good company. Definitely. Now, it sounds like a simple question, but what is foraging, and how did you get into the area? Well, to me, I think you're going to get a different definition from everybody you ask, but to me, foraging means going out in search of wild plants and mushrooms, wild edible plants and mushrooms, harvesting them, and then eating them. And I got started, I was a professional gardener in New York City, and one of the people who worked for me was a forager, and she just kept talking about it, and it sounded so interesting, and occasionally she would share her lunch with me, and uh, I thought the, the flavors were delicious, and they were free, and they were seasonal, and they were organic, so I was just totally obsessed almost right away. Well, I'll loop myself into this because uh, when I hear the term foraging, I think about you have to go walk back in the woods and down to the creek and all the way like that (laughs) to look for wild edibles. But it's not that case. You can look for wild edibles in the backyard, in your street, even in your city park, if you know what you're looking for. And a lot of times we overlook things that we are not uh, not aware that they exist uh, in our area. You are absolutely right, Joey, and that's that's the key thing. You can forage wherever you are. For, for many years, I lived in New York City, and 
some of the best foraging I ever found was in urban parks. There are so many invasive weeds that are delicious. And people don't want them growing there in the first place. They're not necessarily native plants. They're not necessarily beautiful plants. But they are delicious plants. And whether you're in the city or the suburbs or in a rural area, there's something for you to forage for. Okay, great. Um, what is the best way to be 100% sure of identification of plants that you are foraging for? Well, there's a lot of ways to learn about foraging, but I'm glad you said 100% because you really have to be 100% sure of what you've got before you eat it yourself or serve it to anybody else. If you have any doubt, just walk away. Just do not eat it because it's not worth the risk. But if you're going to be serious about learning to identify these plants, the best thing that you can do is take a class with somebody who's an expert in person um, or, or go walk on a foraging walk with a friend who knows what they're doing. And after that, you should, you should read a lot of books. Read everything you can get your hands on. Join some Facebook groups. There are a lot of online foraging uh, places. But I think that taking a class in person with somebody is really the best way to learn. Now, in your videos and, and your books, there, w there's some things that maybe people are not aware of that are edible items that we clearly have in our backyard. Hostas, yep. daylilies, yep. milkweed. <laughs> yeah, and those are all things that are really easy to harvest. And if, if they're plants that you're growing on purpose, like hostas and daylilies, um, in my book I talk about how you can harvest these things in a way that still leaves your garden looking beautiful. And if it's something like milkweed that you would rather not have in your garden, well, you can, you can pull that up by the roots, but I would suggest harvesting it to keep it in check. Lots of times these weeds that grow so aggressively can be um, kept in check so they don't have such an aggressive growth habit if you simply harvest them and eat them. And milkweed, i got to say, is one of the most delicious wild edible plants out there. It's got so many different wild edible parts. Well, one of the wild edible parts in the milkweed is a, the young pod. You can basically boil it and then rub, roll it in batter and deep fry it. Yes, and it's so tasty. You have to try that this year. When the pods are between, about an inch, maybe two inches long, no more than that, they're at their most delicious. If you split open one pod and you can see only white silk, that's the good stage. If it's already started to develop the little brown pieces in there that hold the white silk, then it's too mature. But if it's all white inside and the pod feels nice and soft to your hand, do exactly what you just said. Boil it and then roll it in flour and an egg wash, maybe some breadcrumbs, and put that in a deep fryer and some oil, and you are going to have a delicious vegetable. Right. The inside gets kind of melty. You could also probably roll it in pancake batter and deep fry it. That, that wouldn't be too bad itself either. Oh, no, it wouldn't. That would probably be very good. <laughs> Um, so we're talking with Ellen uh, Zacco's author, podcaster, gardener, speaker, and forager. So let's talk about orchids for a minute. You wrote a book. Uh, you wrote, have wrote Orchid Growing for Wimps, Techniques for the Wish I Could Do That Gardener. Now, we have we have heard orchids are hard to grow, hard to maintain. I, I want an orchid, and Joey's like, oh, they're hard to grow, blah, 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 whatever. Um, is this true? What would you say um, in regards to that? I would say, I'm sorry, Joey, you're right about the milkweed, but you're wrong about the orchid, and Holly needs to get an orchid. It all depends on what kind of, you're welcome, it all depends on what kind of orchid you choose. I'm sitting at my desk right now, and I'm looking at two orchids in bloom, and one of them is the easiest possible orchid to grow, and it's, you can buy them almost everywhere. I mean, you can get them at... At big box stores, at garden centers, you can get them in grocery stores, and that's the moth orchid. It's a Phalaenopsis species, and they come in dwarf, in tall, tall varieties. They can be white, they can be magenta, they can be yellow, they can have stripes and polka dots. And these guys are so easy to grow, and the blooms last for months. You spend less on an orchid like this than you would on cut flowers, and they give you so much more joy and bloom reliably year after year after year. This is my fourth year with this orchid, and I swear I do nothing except water it once a week. That's it. That's it. 
So when we when we were placing the orchid in our house, are we wanting indirect, direct, full sun? What are we looking for? And then uh, do we need to fertilize the plant on a regular annual basis, or how do we maintain that type of level of nutrients for the plant? Well, again, it depends on what kind of orchid okay. you're growing. But if you're looking at a phalaenopsis, which is what I would recommend for anybody who wishes starting out, um, that wants bright indirect light. So if you have an east-facing window or a west-facing window that's not blaring direct sun in the afternoon, that's a good spot for the phalaenopsis. And most of the time, they, you will find they come potted in um, sphagnum moss, which holds a lot of moisture. So if your orchid is, is potted in that long grain sphagnum moss, you're only going to need to water it once every seven to ten days unless your house is super hot and super dry. But in the average home, once every seven to ten days is going to do it, and you want to water it until water runs out the holes in the bottom of the pot. And if your pot doesn't have holes in the bottom of it, don't keep it in that pot. Transplant it because that orchid needs good drainage. In nature, it's an epiphyte, so it grows perched on a tree with its roots exposed to the air. And if you keep it in a container where it's wet all the time, it's not going to be happy. As far as uh, fertilizer goes, i got to admit, I'm, I'm very lazy. I, this orchid I mentioned right now that's in its fourth year of bloom with me, I have never fertilized it, not once. I'm not saying you should do that. Once a year is probably a good idea. But these are pretty tough plants, and um, they really don't need very much from you at all. Now, you've wrote a number of books. Uh, do you, And I'm sure this is like asking a parent who's their favorite child. Do you have a favorite book? And, and if so, what is specific, special about that book that you kind of hold it above the other ones? My favorite book is definitely Backyard Foraging because I get a real thrill out of telling people that the things they're already growing in their garden, the plants they already know from walking in their neighborhood, are edible. I mean, people. so many people grow crab apple trees for the beautiful flowers, and so few people actually do anything with the fruit. I, I mean, there's so many things you can do with crab apples. They can be as delicious as cultivated apples. Lilacs are edible. You mentioned daylilies and hostas before. Those, my entire garden is planted with edible plants, and if somebody walked by who was not a forager, they would have no idea. Roses. Um, flowering quince. There's, that's, that's what gets me excited. That the stuff that you know and you grow already, but you don't know you can eat it. So to me, the backyard foraging book is the most special. Well, and that's the situation that we as an, a generation now, we think that everything is, we can grow a few things, buy them at the grocery store. From generations, years and years and years ago, Native Americans, uh, those who came over, they understood how to utilize the land and what worked and what didn't work, and they, we've lost all that knowledge. You're, you're exactly right, and I say this all the time. We have lost that knowledge, and we have to look back at our grandparents and our great-grandparents and also to other cultures from other parts of the world where, where things are grown as food crops, and we just think of them as ornamental. If you walked into a Japanese grocery store, you would see hosta shoots for sale. You would see chrysanthemum leaves for sale. You would never find that here. So it's really interesting to look back a few generations in our own culture and also to look at other parts of the world and see what they're eating that we just grow because it's pretty. And we've talked about on the program that the Asian community understands this, and I'm not a medical professional here, but I make the assumption that they are much healthier than many of us because of the understanding of the foods that they're consuming. I, you know, I can't speak to that personally. You, you may be right. It may also be that the um, typical Asian diet has less, um, less red meat, less fat. I, I really don't know. But I certainly do love looking to other cultures for suggestions of, on what I can eat that might be a little unusual. Absolutely. All right, now, where, where can we find more about you, your podcast, your books, online courses, etc.? Well, I have a website. It's backyardforager.com. That's all one word, backyardforager.com. Um, you can also Google my name, Ellen Zakos. Zakos is a pretty unusual <laughs> last name. 
Um, but I do have a couple of online courses that I'm very excited about because I travel all over the country teaching uh, foraging workshops and cooking workshops. But, you know, not everybody can travel. And by doing these online courses, I now can offer that kind of education to people wherever they live. And information about those classes and about my book are all on the website. Well, Ellen, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to educate us on a lot of things that uh, we kind of knew and I was wrong on, as well as uh, our listeners uh, in regards to orchid foraging and uh, your courses that you have available and your books. Well, thank you both so much for having me as a guest. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, when we come back, it's all about your garden questions. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. Gardeners know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marvel that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight line, perfectly spaced rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never get easier. Wisconsin Greenhouse Company has custom made greenhouses to suit your needs. Grow fruit and vegetables all year long. Strongest greenhouses available that will last a lifetime. Beautiful design available in any size and color. Weather resistant, energy efficient to save on that heating cost. Mix and match with glazings to suit your climate. Sturdy and durable, they'll hold up to those heavy snow loads. They'll even add them to homes. For agricultural to lodging to entertaining, it's a great addition to any garden or landscape. Check them out at Wisconsin Greenhouse Company. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound. Quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway. Any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping, a $250 value at EcoGardenSystems.com. Get your garden growing with a Chapin Garden Seeder. Eliminate the back-breaking work of planting seeds in your garden. The Model 8701B Seeder makes it easy to accomplish planting rows of seeds of various sizes. Find the Chapin Garden Seeder online or order it through your local Home Depot, True Value, or Do It Best Hardware Store. To see the full line of Chapin Lawn and Garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100 percent more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing, pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4 foot by 4 foot area. DripGarden.com Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com Now with over 450 vertical Varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, emailed with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. 
MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Row Maker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Looking for the only garden talk radio show on your dial? You found it. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. The Ivy Organic 31 Plant Guard Hotline. Ivy Organic 31 Plant Guard Natural Protects Plants Against Damage and Sunburn. Insects and Rodents Protects Newly Installed Plants and Trees. Shields prune and damage surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 301 plant guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. You can tweet us using hashtag twvg. Our Twitter handle is at twvgshow. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. That number of questions come in through social media platforms, email, the whole deal. Uh, Kim asks, uh, I've got an indoor seeding starting question. Uh, plants are coming up and they're under grow lights. Do I still need to use a warming pad or heat mat, or can I remove that and use it to start other seeds? No, you don't have to keep that heat pad there. The heat pad is just basically, especially if you're growing in like a basement or a room that's a little bit cooler to help that germination. If you do not remove the heat pad, heat mat, it can cause, even with adequate light, the plants to be a little more leggy than uh, they normally would. Okay, so newbie here, my hubby and I are experimenting with um, him with soil, me with me with soil, him with hydro. We built a raised bed, 4x4x16, four by four by and filled it with garden soil from a local nursery, topped it off with compost. I plan to put um, some early girl tomato seedlings in it soon. Would it be too much to add some summer squash, zucchini plants between them? I have a house rabbit, and I will have plenty of season-long pellets to add if needed. Just worried about crowding roots. So You're looking at 16 square feet. Uh, four to five tomato plants is going to be more than enough. Remember, these plants are going to take two to three foot because you've got good nutrient-rich soil. It's going to these plants are going to fill out that four by four foot bed. Really, four uh, tomatoes is about all you can put in that bed. Uh, one in each corner. If you try to put anything else, you're going to crowd an additional uh, an additional tomato plant. You may be able to squeeze the fifth one in there, like a diamond shaped or uh, five, four and a quarter, four on each one on each corner and one in the center. But if you're going to do a zucchini plant, it's not going to work because the zucchini plant needs a lot of air circulation and it's going to overtake. So just stick with four plants. Uh, you're going to be more than happy with the production you get off of those tomato plants. So I just tried to split in my starts three days ago. They all now look sad. Will it take a few days for them to perk back up after the roots set? Yeah, and after you plant, transplant your starts, you always want to water them. That's going to help prevent any sort of shock. Yeah, they, they will go through a shock. We talked about it earlier in the program. We want minimal uh, movement of these plants. If we can start them in one container and keep them in that container uh, or anything like that uh, in order for the plants, uh, party cup, root, root maker tray, and we just plant them there and then transplant them in the garden, that's good. We don't want to continue to move these things around as much as possible. Johnny asked, I'm confused about sometimes hearing that you are able to plant things as soon as the soil can be worked. I live here in southeast Wisconsin as well. I have everything prepped for planting as the ground is thawed. Can I sow radishes, beet seeds, 
right away, even though the seed packet says you should wait until the frost is over? Thanks. The answer is yes. You can plant radishes and beets and, and colder temperatures, 26 to 31 degrees. Uh, it may burn the foliage if it does germinate, but it will not kill. Uh, those plants or broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, chard, lettuce, mustard, uh, onions, and turnips. The colder temperatures uh, plants are really hardy below the third, below 26 degrees, and that's beets, Brussels sprouts, carrots, collards, kale, parsley, and spinach. So go ahead and plant them as soon as the soil can be worked, even though the seed packet says wait. Some of these plants are daylight sensitive, which means they will go to bolt when the daylight gets too long, the days get too long. So get them in the ground as soon as possible. The question that comes in from Rose is, should I till or not till, and how deep should I till? We covered reasons why we choose not to till our garden last week. So we're going to go out to Ben Bartley. He is from Standard Process Farms. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local health care professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. Hi, this is Ben Bartlett with the Standard Process Organic Farm. Today we have a question from Rose in Philadelphia, which is really a popular topic these days. To till or not to till? So I grew up, as many people did, believing that the best way to prepare your garden is to work the soil until it's really fine and easy to plant into. What we're starting to recognize, though, is that overworking the garden through tillage has consequences in disturbing the microbiology, and then it limits the amount of nutrients that crop can actually take up out of the soil. So if you till, make sure you try to work some kind of crop, cover crop or grass into the soil first. It feeds the biology, provides nutrients for the next growing crop, and then helps keep the the biology healthy. We're destroying their home every time we till, so we want to give them the opportunity to rebuild their house. So I realized that Rose asked a question about tilling depth. And the general answer, if you're going to till, is three to five inches at the most. Deeper tends to disturb what's called the soil uh, B horizon. And then sometimes you have to work deeper if you've got a hard pen, if you've been working that ground for a long time. But really, if you can do things without tillage, adding compost, uh, working what's called a lasagna garden where you build layers with, with leaves. That's the best option, and then that helps reduce the amount of compaction that can happen to that soil. It improves your garden crop. Fantastic information on tilling and not tilling. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly appreciate yours. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, I want to remind you that the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand well and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Coming up next week on the program, don't miss it, we're going to talk about seven secrets to a higher yield in your garden, what you need to do in order to increase the productivity and the harvest of your vegetables and fruits, plus things to know before we add coffee grounds to our garden to improve soil fertility. Plus, environmentalist and author Christina Willingham will be with us. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit in its entirety, you can do that a couple of ways, by going to your favorite podcast-providing website, searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, or by going to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website, clicking on the radio tab or the highlight tab on the right-hand side of the page. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joy and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcast, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.